Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Please stand. We'll have opening prayer. Heavenly Father Yahweh, this is your servant, Khan David Hawkins, requesting permission to pray in unity with the priest of the house of Yahweh, through your last day's witness and servant, the great Kohan Yeshua Abel Hawkins, and through our great high priest, Yeshua. Heavenly Father Yahweh, on this your holy Sabbath day, we uh, come before you for the afternoon uh, workshop here this afternoon. We do thank you for the information that uh, Pastor has uh, prepared for us, uh, spoken and now written in the 14th book of Israel, part two, which we'll be studying from uh, chapter 18 here today. We thank you for this information and the promise of your soon coming kingdom. And uh, the topic today, in fact, is about uh, your soon coming kingdom. And we, and we rejoice in this information, ask you to bless us with wisdom and understanding. Give you all honor, praise, and thanks in Yeshua's name as seeds of the witness of Israel. Hallelujah. Way. Please be seated. So we are on chapter 18 of the 14th book of Israel, part 2. This is uh, page 227. The kingdom of heaven, what is it? Number 3, understanding the details. Number 1. So pastor gives a lot of details in here about the the, the, the soon coming kingdom, or some details, some vital details. And uh, beginning in verse, uh, the last part of verse 1 here, he says, We will have then, at that time, in the kingdom, Holy Spirit, Spirit Holy, supporting the flesh instead of blood that we now have. So it's Spirit Holy running, going through our veins instead of blood. Uh, that's the change that will come upon us if we are permitted to enter into the kingdom. And over on uh, the next column, verse 2, it's a prophecy too, this information about the kingdom. Pastor says these are prophecies also. But it's a prophecy of a great kingdom that you're going to have part of. About a kingdom, about Yahweh, about who he is, and who the world thinks he is. Some, some of the misunderstanding that the world has when they think of uh, who Yahweh is. We've been showing the differences in what is commonly taught in the world today and what we're actually being, and what we're actually being made for and the joys that we're going into. Verse 3, the Christian world today, the, world, the whole world, of course, I guess, uh, looks like kind of looks on Yahweh as being a ball of gas, of some kind of gastric God. And going over to page 228 here, but they think somehow that this body that he created for us, even though we are made in his image, that this body is going to disappear and we're going to be just a vapor floating around in a cloud this, this, some way. Verse 4, Yahweh shows who he is. He describes himself and he says man is made in his image. So how we are, that, that is how Yahweh is uh, as far as appearance and, and, and the way uh, he, we, we are created. Verse 4, that he has hair and he's got to have a head to hang the hair on and it's white so you know it's it's kind of like some of, some of ours who are getting older as Yahweh is very, very old. He's existed uh, for a very long time. He has eyes to see, but, but they don't want to go any lower than his neck. From there on down, they don't want to admit that he has a body and that he enjoys life. And that men and women are going to enjoy the benefits of life that he has created for us, even though it's going to be much more abundant, much more abundant, this, this life in Yahweh's kingdom. And this is what your scripture shows. Going down to the lower part of verse 5 here, Yahweh's not supposed to have any feelings, according to the way the world understands our Heavenly Father. I guess he, he wouldn't if he, was a, if he was floating around like a ball of gas. He wouldn't have feelings, he wouldn't have thoughts even, but the fact is he does have desires and he enjoys life to the fullest in, in, in his full righteousness, which he is. Everything he makes, brethren, everything he has created 
If you look at his creation, it enjoys life from the largest elephant down to the smallest, very smallest insects on earth. Down to verse 7 here. And Yahweh created this in each and every one of his creation. Yet he's not supposed to enjoy anything himself. You know this concept is ridiculous. Absurd, <clears throat> you know what a ridiculous, absurd feeling that we must have towards our Father, whose image we are. We're in his image. This, this life that he has created is going to be much more abundant than it is today to the ones who become holy like Yahweh is holy. Now, now I'll grant you, Pastor says, he doesn't break his laws and he doesn't become sinful, but he does enjoy life as he has created us to do. Going down to verse 9 here, Yahweh tells us in no uncertain terms, and he says it over and over, come to my feast and learn to rejoice. So this is, this is, a, this is a command. We come to Yahweh's feast, the Sabbath is a feast, to, to, enjoy, to rejoice in, in his presence. And that joy, that rejoicing is counted to all of us as righteousness. Yahweh is our righteousness. He said, as righteousness. Let's go over to uh, page 229 here, the first column. <clears throat> halfway down verse 12 here. Now when we're born of spirit holy, as Yeshua was, when Yeshua was resurrected, the, he, was, he was resurrected as a, a living firstborn human being with spirit, keeping him alive, no, no longer blood. And, uh, and as Yeshua was firstborn of many brothers, if you remember, we are going to have fleshly bodies, you know, bones and flesh and cartilage and all that, we're not going to be supported by blood. Our life is not going to be supported by blood as it is today. The blood is the life there today. It won't be at that time. It won't be in Yahweh's kingdom. It won't be that way that it is now with the blood keeping us alive. It will be supported by spirit holy. Yeshua had spirit holy and he still had his body. If you remember, in fact, he had the holes that were punched in his, in his hands and uh, feet and, and the hole from the spear. And he let the apostle Thomas put his hand in, in that hole in his, in his side. But the hole was still there that drained the life from his body, that drained the blood from his body, which supported that body and kept it alive. Blood will keep it alive for a certain certain time, but it's not forever. No, it's not, it's not forever, but, but spirit keeping us alive, that is forever. Verse 13, neither is blood, blood kin or, or, or relatives, uh, our own uh, blood, blood relation. Neither is blood kin forever that we look upon, you know, and we cherish. We're hanging on to a temporary thing, brethren. Spirit holy should be much more important to us Spirit holy of Yahweh, which stands for righteousness, which is righteousness and teaches and guides us to righteousness. That should be more important to us than blood kin who have turned against Yahweh, and Yahweh says they're dead, no longer to be remembered, in fact, after the sentencing comes. So if uh, those who are not faithful to Yahweh, Yahweh simply forgets them. Sad thing, but Yahweh simply forgets them. Of course, there is a day of sentencing coming, and, and right now, this brings us to another point. And I showed in Scripture where there are actually court proceedings in heaven, and there is a vast number of beings up there. And now he gets into talking about the, 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 the beings that inhabit the universe uh, in, in quite a bit of detail, actually, these couple of, next couple of verses. A vast number that this earth could not even hold. That is that this system is filled with court systems and regulations and temples and houses and buildings and so forth that are going on in the planets. Not visible now where we can see them because it's hidden from mankind's eyes at this time. Nevertheless, Yahweh does show these things and show that these are these court systems going, going on after suffering violence at this time. In fact, Yahweh's kingdom is suffering violence at this time. There's a lot of chaos in, in, in the universe at this time, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of Yahweh. 
the house of Yahweh, in fact. But in the, in the beginning was the plan of, of to create a kingdom that would be so righteous, so holy like Yahweh himself, that it would prevent and actually guide the universe away from violence and hatred and bring the universe to perfection and even judge the Malachim that are now our helpers and our shields. Yahweh sets them around us to protect us. If he hadn't, you'd be dead already. But, but they do protect us. And the house of Yahweh would definitely be destroyed But now, by now, and we know this. Let's go over to page 230, uh, down to uh, halfway through 18. Uh, but it's only open to, to your eyes in these last days through, this, through his house. So we're the only ones who see this, to see this plan of Yahweh right here. We learn it little by little, line upon line, from the Yahweh's last day's witness. Last days through his house, of course, and you will be able to see and understand this. And what I want you to get into your mind right now is just what I've told you. Yahweh is a being who enjoys life to the fullest. He's building a family who can enjoy life with him and more abundantly than you would ever dream of here on earth in this blood flowing body at this time. It is just a few, a very minute joy that we're experiencing here on earth at this time. In this very short span of life that we have, we, are rapid, we rapidly deteriorate. The grass withers, the flower fades. But what's forever? The laws of Yahweh, his plan, his kingdom. That's forever. We won't be doing, doing it there. Uh, we won't be doing it, it there, deteriorating he's talking about. We won't be doing it. We keep, I keep saying there it's actually going to be here on this kingdom. This kingdom he's talking about is actually going to be here on earth and will always be our kingdom. But we will rule the universe from this earth. Let's go over to Matthew 8, Pastor says, uh, because Yeshua, he just gave bits and pieces. All, all of them do because, as he said, it's hidden from the world. So it's, it, ta it takes the man of Yahweh, Yisrael Hawkins, in these last days to put it all together and explain it. He didn't want to, the world to see what your, your eyes are seeing in these last days. Now, we are privileged to bring this out in books in these last days, and the world wouldn't, won't believe it because the world has already turned against the house of Yahweh, and only those who Yahweh calls are going to come here anyway. So we have to be called of Yahweh to, to, to even to want to come to, to the house of Yahweh to learn and receive this knowledge with open arms and open hearts when your mind is inclined to Yahweh by Yahweh's Spirit Holy. Uh, down to halfway through verse 21 here. This message is being preached in all the world for a witness against them. Matithia 24:14. Yahweh shows that they won't take it, they won't accept it, but it's there for them. But here in Matithia is what I've told you in, in, I told you in mind. Keep, keep this in mind now as we proceed to this understanding of what Yahweh actually has inspired in these last days. So in Matithia 8, verse 5, when Yahshua had entered Caper Capernaum, a centurion, a centurion is a very important Roman soldier, a commander, in fact, came to Yahshua and pleaded, saying, saying, Teacher, my servant lies at home paralyzed and in great suffering. Look at the respect this Roman soldier had for Yahshua. He knew him. They, they were not strangers. He said, Teacher. He recognized him uh, with a term, a term of honor here. Verse 7, Yahshua said to him, I will come and heal him. He didn't ask him any other questions. He knew the man. Verse 8, the centurion answered and said, Teacher, I'm not worthy enough for you to, to come under my roof. But speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. He knew the authority that Yeshua had. Pastor says, notice the respect here that he had for Yeshua. Now, Yeshua wasn't, you know, an extraordinary man who stood out among the, 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 the crowds. Isaiah 53 says there was nothing special about his appearance that anyone would desire Yeshua because of his appearance. In fact, his appearance was so, according to the prophecy, that no one 
would look upon him and desire his riches or fame or anything about him. In fact, they would probably have looked down on him had it not been for what he stood for, which was the laws of Yahweh, always. But this centurion understood the ranks and the government that Yeshua had taught before him. He had to have this teaching or he would not have understood what Yeshua was about to show him. I mean, what he said to Yeshua to show forth his understanding of Yeshua's rank and how he controlled different situations. Verse 27, Yeshua didn't, con didn't control through bodily strength or anything like that, but it was because of the command, because of his ability to command that he had the authority that he had over individual beings, speaking of the Malachim here, the different forms of Malachim, who now reign in the universe, throughout the universe, those, those beings visibly can be hidden from mankind at this time, and they are. I don't see any Malachim, and, you know, although you know, the scriptures do say you, you might uh, uh, you know, look upon a Malachim not knowing it is one, but those being, beings' visibility can be hidden from mankind at this time, but who in actual fact have bodily forms. Many of them do even have fleshly forms that the scripture shows that we can actually see. But many of them do not, and it takes a special act of Yahweh, and you find this in Ilya, where Ilya actually asked that Yahweh open the minds of another individual, his servant, in fact, his trainee, and let him see the Malachim around him, the spirit beings that were actually invisible to, to mankind's sight, as it is at this time, but who nevertheless were there guarding the camp of Yahweh at that time as they are now, as the king's soldiers were all out to destroy the camp of Yahweh, even as they are at this time. I'd like to just uh, read that, that scripture. <clears throat> it's, uh, of course, in uh, 2 Kings 6. <clears throat> Uh, hope, hopefully you can read the printing here. But this is a story of the king of Aram, one, one of the enemies of the nation of Israel. And, uh, and the prophet Elisha, he, if the king of Aram was planning to do some bad things to the nation of Israel, Elisha, the prophet, would go to the king of Israel and say, hey, you better beware of this situation. He's coming to do this. So the king of Aram was a little bit irritated by this, and he says the king of Aram was enraged over this thing, you know, having his plans made known to the king of Israel. So he summoned his officers and said to them, tell me, which one of us is on the side of the king? Of who's a traitor here? Who's, who's betraying our secrets? One of the officers said, none of us, my ruler, O king, but Elisha, the prophet of Israel, the prophet of Yahweh, tells the king of, of Israel the words you speak in your bedroom. He ordered, the so king ordered, go find out where he is so I can send men to capture him. He was informed, saying, he is at Dothan. So he dispatched a strong force of horses and chariots there. They set out by night and surrounded the city. So when the man of the servant of Yahweh, this is the trainee, Elisha's trainee, got up early in the morning, uh, or this is Elisha and, and his uh, servant who was with him, got up early and went out, there was the army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. The servants said, O my ruler Elisha, what shall we do? He answered, Do not fear, because those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Yahweh's army of Malachim is much larger than their army. So Elisha prayed and said, Yahweh, I pray, open his eyes so he may see. Then Yahweh opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw the hills were full of Malachim, Yahweh's, uh, Yahweh's army, a fire all around Elisha. And it's the same way here. We don't see Yahweh's army protecting us, but they're there. He, they're here. When the Arameans advanced toward, toward him, Elisha prayed to Yahweh and said, I pray, strike this people with blindness. And he struck them with blindness, just as Elisha had prayed. So that's how Yahweh handled that situation. <clears throat> the, uh, all these uh, soldiers who depended on their eyesight for fighting, they were struck blind. Who did it? Elisha gave the command to the Malachim to do it. And so it's a similar situation with what uh, 
what the king of it with uh, what Yeshua and this uh, uh, Roman centurion uh, who requested a, a gift of uh, or a, a special healing for his servant. So down here in uh, in 29, okay, this servant now, he said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. And he realized that, it, that he didn't have the honor to come before this man, to actually come before this man without being asked. If, and, and you can read about this in Hadassah. She couldn't come before. She was afraid of coming before the king without being requested uh, in his presence. If you read the history of the people who took it upon themselves and would come before a king without being pleaded, in actual fact, some of them would be put to death by making this bold move in, in, in coming before authority that, that they did not have, uh, did not give them the authority of an appearance at that time. Well, this man realized this, and he said, speak the word. This Roman centurion who knew Yeshua said, speak the word, and, and uh, speak the word, and it will be done. And he spoke, and he, show, he shows how he knows this, verse 9. For I am a man under authority. I have soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goes. And I say, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. You see what he's saying here? He's, he knows that Yeshua has the authority. And that's what we have the opportunity to obtain. Authority to do righteous, wonderful things in Yahweh's kingdom. He knows that Yeshua has authority over beings and powers that can actually perform acts. And all Yeshua has to do is give the command. Well, where are, where are these beings? Well, where are these beings? They are not in sight. It wasn't his disciples who were going to go out and give him a shot of penicillin, this servant a shot of penicillin to get him well. That was not the cure for it, but Yeshua had the authority to do so. So, so be it done. And certain things carried, carried this out and healed, and, and healed this person. So, so you see, you see Yeshua's time, the same time, same as in the, the days of Elisha. Verse 10, when Yeshua heard this, he marveled and said to those who followed, Truly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not in, not in Israel. The word faith here, get the, get the definition of the word faith. It means knowledge and understanding. Knowledge and understanding, which we get here. We get here in these classes and Sabbath services and, and these books of Israel. Yeshua hadn't seen so much understanding of Yahweh's way not even in all Israel, nor among the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Had they had this knowledge, they would probably be, have been writing about it and bragging about it. But in fact, in, but the fact is, it was hidden from them too, because they weren't seeking Yahweh. I think my time is up. Uh, and uh, so, re if you don't please stand. Uh, rejoice with uh, with me in introducing uh, our next speaker, the great Combatithia Hawkins. Shabbat shalom, great man of Yahweh. You can be seated. Okay, we're going to be picking up here in chapter 18 on page 223. And again, this is chapter 18 of the 14th book of Israel, part 2, Sin Never Again. And the title of the sermon that Pastor gave back on 6-3-1995, it was a series called The Kingdom of Heaven, What Is It? And this was the third sermon in the series. And they had a, a, a sub-series here of Understanding the Details, number 1. And we're going to be picking up here on page 233, and verse 44, and Pastor had briefly here talked about the Attorney General at the time of the United States talking about those who read the Bible, you know, doing radical things, taking guns and killing themselves or others. And Pastor says, well, of course, we will never do that in the house of Yahweh. That is, we will never use guns, but we are going to end this government one day with a different kind of power that we're going to receive because we have this strength or we are obtaining this strength that we get through obedience to Yahweh, 
who one day give us a power that is unlimited. Now, we don't use guns. We don't use force in the house of Yahweh. But Yahweh is going to give authority to his house to receive the power and the authority of the governments. You know, because we know this beastly governmental system is coming to an end. And this power, this strength here, remember Malachia chapter 4 and verse 5, it shows us that the laws of Yahweh are the strength, the strength of Yahweh. This is the strength that the house of Yahweh has. We don't have, you know, some bomb that's greater than a nuclear bomb or some gun that's greater than the army's guns. We have Yahweh's laws, which is our strength, our protection. It says, we will obtain this strength that we will get through obedience to Yahweh, who will one day give us a power that is unlimited unlimited that you could use to bring a tornado and destroy a city you would need a bomb to destroy a federal building in oklahoma city you could send a tornado that no one could fight against nor would they believe nor would they believe in the whereabouts of who sent it but you're going to have that power and he's talking about the authority over these microorganisms which we now know you know how 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 Yeshua controls the wind, you know, he controls the microorganisms. They listen and obey him because they know that he won't harm them, that there's no sin that lies within them. But you're going to have that power. That's why Yahweh has to make sure you would never use that power for any kind of evil. You know, and this is the reason we're allowed to go through these different tests and trials day by day. You know, and these these different situations where we're allowed to be tested and um, our buttons to be pushed, our toes to be stepped on, you know, mean things to be said to us to see how are we going to respond? How are we going to react? You know, we need to we need to think a peaceful solution, react acronym. We need to think about what we're doing before we do it, realizing that Yahweh is trying to prove us fit for this position to have this power, this power to control the microorganisms. You know, and if you had that power and you didn't have self-control, you, you weren't thinking before you acted, you know, or, or considering your thoughts before you allow them to lead to feelings, you know, you could actually destroy people. You could send a tornado through their, their, their tent, their building, their house, you know, and destroy them just by bearing hatred or a grudge against someone. So this is why it's important to, to take our tests, take our trials, make sure we're taking the time to stop and to think and to consider before we proceed so we can make the right choice. You know, one that won't bring any kind of harm or hurt to anyone, ourself, or the environment. So this is what Yahweh is doing right now. He's, he's making sure that we would never use this power for any kind of evil. No harm. Now if you go over here to verse 48, he's, he says, look over to Romans chapter 5 and verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, that is without the laws, without righteousness, without being in unity or even in Yahweh's attention, brought to his attention, Yahweh without him, or even, even without him knowing us, because we were cut off without Yahweh. As Isaiah 59, 1 and 2 says, that sin cuts us off from Yahweh. And when we were cut off from Yahweh, we had no strength. In fact, if Yahweh did not give us life, brethren, there would be no other being in the universe now who can give us life. None at all. You know, so before Yahweh called us to his house, before we were his sons, before we were uh, baptized with his name, you know, we were cut off. We were cut off from him because we were living in sin. In verse 49, he says, Satan used to, Lucifer used to have that power. He's talking about this power to give life. Satan used to have that power. If you got that sermon on what was actually taken away from Lucifer, and she can no longer maintain or create flesh and give it life. That was all taken away from her, but she had it at one time, along with the other cherubim, it was taken away from them. Okay, she lost the trust of the microorganisms because she turned in sin and jealousy and hatred for mankind. Well, you're going to have that power. In fact, a crown. If I ever get back into that crown that you're going to have and the crown, the breastplate that you're going to have, you'll understand this. And the crown Lucifer had is the wife of Yahweh. The ability that she had and the knowledge and the great power that she had. We will see this. It's all shown in her crown and also the breastplate, breastplate of the priest. You know, and if, if you think of uh, Proverbs uh, 31, where it talks about a, a, a virtuous wife and it talks about how her husband safely trusts in her, you know, and, and you realize the, the authority and the power that's given to one's wife. You know, they give them full trust over their household and, and the comings and goings of their household. They put this full trust in them. And this is what Satan Lucifer had at one time, being the wife Yahweh, but she lost those things. 
You know, and this is what Yahweh is offering to his sons, you know, to his sons or his daughters here who qualify for this position. This is the opportunity we have to actually have this power. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. If you go over here to page 235 and verse 55, he's continuing in Romans chapter 5 and verse 10. For if when we were Yahweh's enemies, notice that now, when you're sinners, when you don't uphold Yahweh's laws, yes, you are his enemies. You are the enemy of Yahweh if you refuse to uphold even one law. You know, um, if, if we allow sin into our life, you know, we actually become an enemy of Yahweh, you know, and, and think, you know, I know we're learning the peaceful solution and we're learning not to uh, hold any grudges or hatred. And Yeshua taught us to pray for our enemies. But think about, it, you know, if you've ever had someone steal from you or do something uh, ill to you in your lifetime, you know, think about that, that, that pain and that torment and that dislike that it caused in the mind, you know, and think about that when we, we need to keep that in our minds when we're, tempted to allow sin into our life you know when we're when we're when we're thinking you know well i just got to get back i got to get even or i just got to give him a piece of my mind you know we need to remember that right now we're we're trained to be sons of yahweh you know and do we want to turn turn ourselves into an enemy of yahweh you know yahweh forbid that we would want to be his enemy you know and this this should help us to stay away from sin and making uh, choices that lead to sin because we don't want to be Yahweh's enemy. We want to be called his friends, his sons. You know, as Pastor once said, a father is his, his son's best friend. You know, we would want to be Yahweh, Yahweh to be our best friend. You know, he can trust us and know that we are going to make the right choice in all situations. You are the enemy of Yahweh if you refuse to uphold even one law, as Jacob or James said. If we break even one law, we are guilty of breaking them all. So our strength comes from within, from within ourselves, upholding Yahweh's laws, determining to accept and to model our lives after them and to uphold them. You know, this is the strength that we get through upholding these laws. It's not, it's not a secret formula. It's not a special thing you can drink, eat, you know, read, watch. It comes through upholding these laws, through practicing. Remember 1st Yachanan chapter 3 and verse 7. He who practices righteousness is righteous. You know, practice, you know, like a, a doctor practices medicine, a lawyer practices law. It's something you do day by day, day by day. You go, you know, as if you're going into the office and you're practicing medicine, you're practicing law. You know, as a saint of Yahweh, as a son of Yahweh, day by day, we are to be practicing righteousness through each choice that we make. Always having Yahweh's laws in the forefront of our minds to help us throughout the day. If you jump over here to verse 60 on page 235, but he says... And not only, still reading here in Romans chapter 5, and he's in verse 11, and not only this, but we will rejoice in Yahweh through our king, Yeshua, a king who is going to be our king under Yahweh, of course, forever. He's not going to take over the headship of Yahweh, but he is his son, working with Yahweh right now at his side. You know, as, uh, as Pastor shown that, you know, Yeshua is always going to be 2,000 years ahead of him. You know, and Pastor is always going to be, you know, hundred years ahead of us or you know how, however many years he is ahead of us because we're never going to outrank him or out uh, um, educate him you know he's always going to be wiser than us and Yeshua here he recognizes that Yahweh is always going to be wiser than him he's his head and he's always going to submit under his head go to his head this is the headship that Yeshua is going to submit to of Yahweh he is the son Yeshua is the son and he's working with Yahweh right now at his side not that Yeshua is just sitting there on a throne, sitting there. No, he's got an individual life. He is living and looking forward to sharing that life with the rest of us here on earth and those who have died before us. And he is, in fact, getting ready to take over this kingdom that he is learning all about at this time. He is deeply learning, but he is also deeply enjoying at this time as he did in a few moments and times when he was li living on earth. He is enjoying life, deeply enjoying life, Pastor shows. Yeshua is a man just like us. You know, he, he, he uh, uh, lives and breathes, eats, you know, and, and he goes about and he does his daily uh, works and he enjoys life. You know, he'll enjoy it here to the fullest in the kingdom. But right now he's enjoying life like he did a few moments here on earth. You know, and, and when you think so we're going to get down here, if we have time here shortly, where Pastor shows about this, this great um, creation, you know, it, it's just amazing to see you know, how much work that Yahweh has for his sons. 
In verse 63 here, jumping down to verse 63, he says, okay, now here we have a king here, Yeshua Messiah, in Romans 5.11, through whom we have now received reconciliation, through whom also we hope. You know, our hope was in Yeshua. If he didn't make it, we wouldn't make it. But you know what? Yahweh says in no uncertain terms, if we don't make it, brethren, this last calling, none of the others will. It will all have been futile. But he also prophesied that we will make it. Praise Yahweh. You know, we will make it because we have these teachings. You know, and this is um, this is something that we have to think on an individual basis that we have to make it. We have these teachings. We have to make it. You know, it's not that we're promised that we're just going to make it, you know, just because we have to make it so they can make it. No, you know, uh, as as in Yeshua's day, there were few there were few who actually believed and trusted in what he taught them you know, and that actually made it, you know, and we have this opportunity to be a part of these few, you know, think of just a small number. Here we are compared to the vast population on the earth. We can be a part of those few, you know, but if we think we're going to hold our brother back, you know, because we're not going to, we're not going to overcome and apply Yahweh's laws into our life. And, you know, well, that's going to hold him back. I'm not going to make it. He's not going to make it. No, we're just going to lose out. We're going to lose out individually. You know, we'll be separated from the body. We'll be cast off. You know, as you would, uh, as you would, you know, cast off a sticker or something that got stuck on you. In verse 64, and you know, Yeshua was able to do so because Yahweh brought down the genes. You may not know it, but Yahweh knew every one of your ancestors. And then verse 65, he says, you know, science is just now finding out about DNA. And of course, the scientists have their hopes up so high because they just see a tiny bit of what went on in the laboratories before you were created here on earth. You know, science is thousands of years behind Yahweh, you know, thousands of years, at least 6,000 years, you know, but even, even then mankind, they, 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 the little glimpses that they have when they have these scientific breakthroughs is nothing in what Yahweh's knowledge is. Now he says, I know that gassy God is not supposed to have any laboratories or any way of detecting anything and gaining any knowledge or anything. He's being sarcastic, you know, because Christianity, earlier in the sermon, he talked about Christianity thinks you know, he has these gassy gods just floating around, just, you know, waiting for us to go to heaven. But brethren, if you think about the knowledge, come on now, pay attention. If you think about the knowledge, brethren, that it took to create that little tiny louse that eats your cells when they fall off your body as dead cells, the knowledge it took to put within that little old thing that you could put a thousand on the head of a needle and yet put within that thing the ability to keep your bed cleaned up of dead cells so it wouldn't become contaminated and stink and rot and so forth so you could stay clean in this fleshly body that's dying daily and he puts within that little tiny creature a life a joy and gladness and rejoicing think of that knowledge brethren that is behind that now you're going to have that knowledge. He's talking about the microorganisms, how they actually clean up the dead skin cells, you know, when we're sleeping, because we're constantly shedding dead skin cells, you know, and these things are cleaning up this waste so that our beds won't stink and rot and become con contaminated. Now, I'll give you just a little, a little side story, you know, and you're probably going to think it odd, but I remember when I was younger, um, I think it was because things pastor had taught and hearing them, you know, so like if I get... Uh, I would, I would get where sometimes my skin would peel, you know, and so at night I'd peel it off and I'd stack it up on the side of the bed and then I'd wake up in the morning and it'd be all gone. And I'd stack it right next to the floor and wake up and it'd be gone. <laughs> it, it really occurs. It occurs. They come and they just clean up the dead skin and it disappears. The maid didn't come in. It was just gone right in the morning. Now, continuing on here in verse uh, 74 in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 on page 237, it says, finally, my brothers, strengthen yourselves in Yahweh and in the power of his might. That is, strengthen yourself with his laws. Determine in your mind, brethren, that nobody, nothing, no man, no woman, no Moloch, no demonic spirit, no nothing will turn you from the law because that is your strength. And he said no Moloch because sometimes people think they hear a voice. You know, they hear a voice and it's a voice sent from Yahweh to tell them to do something. And as pastors always said, if it's telling you to break one of Yahweh's laws, it didn't come from Yahweh. You know, it did not come from Yahweh because... Yahweh would not send a messenger to give us uh, uh, a message of breaking his laws of sin. You know, so you can know that that's a, that's a false Moloch, you know, one who comes teaching falsely. You know, listen to the Moloch that Yahweh sent. Israel Hawkins is the one who teaches us Yahweh's laws and how to live according to his laws. Ephesians 6 verse 11. 
put on the whole armor of Yahweh, that is, all 613 of his laws, that you may be able to stand against the wiles, the schemes of the devil. You know, and you have to have this armor on, man. You, you got to have it on because if without this armor, without having Yahweh's laws constantly and in the forefront of our mind, you know, sin is just going to smack right on you. You know, as the scripture says, you know, Satan goes about seeking about like a roaring lion, seeking who she can devour, you know. And if you watch any animal videos, you know, and you see how uh, lions hunt, I mean, they just come up on their prey. They find, you know, uh, one of the little sheep or zebras or, you know, gazelle or eland or something that's fallen behind the pack and, you know, not, not sticking with the program, possibly not healthy, you know, falling down, being sluggish, and they pounce right on it and they devour them. You know, we don't want to be devoured by the adversary, so we have to continue to put on this whole armor. Yes, Pastor says, she has a kingdom too, and that kingdom is vast, and it's hard at work. And the harder we work, as one of the priests said this morning, it seems like the harder she works to try to stop what we're doing and to take us under control and to cause us trouble. You know, Satan is not a slouch. You know, she didn't invent the lazy boy to sit on for herself, to sit around and watch television. You know, Satan is a hard worker. You know, she's not a righteous worker, but she's a hard worker. And she's hard at work to try and make sure that you and I never achieve what Yahweh's promised us. You know, so you have to work 10 times harder and you have to be, you know, uh, wiser than the serpent, as harmless as a dove to make sure that you can stand up against these wiles and these schemes of the adversary. You know, and as we draw closer to Yeshua's return, as we get further along in this last two year period here that's left, you know, you're going to see Satan's energy increasing. And then you're going to have to be extremely strong to resist. We're going to have to be extremely strong in the ways of Yahweh and the knowledge and the teachings that we've learned from Israel Hawkins in the house of Yahweh to resist these attacks, you know, or Satan will take us out. You know, she'll, she'll uh, put some deception before us that we'll believe. And I know, Pastor says, I know there's trouble in your lives. There's trouble in my life. We're all going through these trials to see if we're fit for this kingdom. You know, and this is, a, this is an excellent example because, you know, when you, when you think about, sometimes that's even a way Satan will try to play on the mind. You know, you're practicing righteousness, and it seems like the harder you strive to practice righteousness, the more resistance you're getting, whether it's from your coworkers or your family or your supervisors or, you know, it could be your brothers, your neighbors, kinfolk, whatever, you know, um, things always breaking and falling apart. And you have all these frustrations coming against you. And, you know, sometimes it's easy to think, well, you know, well, the seventh Malik, he probably never goes through these things. So look what he says. He says, I know there's trouble in your lives. There's trouble in my life. We're all going through these trials to see if we're fit for this kingdom. Yahweh says we will be fit. He's predicted we will be. So brethren, do it. You know, we have the opportunity. It's set before us, but we have to make the choice to take hold of it. In verse 77, he says, we've, we've got more power than they have already. They've done, he's talking about the adversaries, you know, Satan and her workers, whether she's using man or spirit beings. We've got more power than they have already. They've done rejected the strength. The only strength there is because there is no power. There is no power but of Yahweh. Okay, there's no power other than Yahweh. So any adversary that comes against us, they're weak. They're weak. And unless you, unless you allow yourself to become very weak, and turning from this strength, the laws of Yahweh, the instructions we've learned from the house of Yahweh, then we can resist against these wiles and these crafts of the adversary. And then in Ephesians 6, and verse 17, he says, And take the helmet of salvation, which is the laws of Yahweh, and the sword of spirit holy, which is the word of Yahweh. You know, you have to have these tools, these resources, and put them to use. You know, it's like the priest showed today about the refining of silver, how that guy's got to wear that helmet or it'll burn his eyes out. You know, you have to put on these tools. And Pastor showed us these tools and the techniques to be able to resist these attacks that come are all found in the Peaceful Solution Character Education Program. Let me read you one letter here in verse 86. He says, let me read you one letter just before I close. It's always a joy to see that people are understanding. And no doubt this person here who wrote me this letter is on the sermon list. It says, just a note to let you know that I am beginning to understand the judicial or court system of Yahweh and how we are being accused and how if we speak evil of our brothers or sisters, we are fulfilling the office of the accuser. Just read that real quickly again. If we speak evil of our brothers, we are fulfilling the office of accuser and how this testimony can be used against us and them at a later date. You know, you see your, your brother doing something, your brother sinning, and the scripture says to correct them. You go, go to the priest, go to the priest, go to the house of Yahweh, get them correction. 
You know, don't go to your other brother and tell him, hey, that, that guy, man, you watch out for that guy. He's, Ooh. you know, what do you want to be an accuser? You want to be a little Satan? You know, I don't, I don't think that we would ever be anything near Satan. You know, we can be near Yahweh, but don't, don't try to be the accuser. But if we, if we speak evil of our brothers, we're fulfilling the office of accuser and how this testimony can be used against us and them at a later date. Of course, at a sentencing date. All of this is part of Halil's plan to set up all of Yahweh's called out ones and keep us from being able to qualify for the positions in this great kingdom. Praise Yahweh. He is still in control. Remember 512. Yahweh is in full control. This note is also to encourage everyone to continue in Yahweh and the work he has set for us to do in these last days of mankind's history in this window of time. And man, that's all the time we have. If you all please stand. Yahweh bless your understanding. Have a great rest of the Sabbath. We'll go ahead and close in prayer. Yahweh bless you. Great Father Yahweh, this is your servant, calm and teeth, and I come before you and complete you and eat the body of priests, being seated with the and through his head, Yeshua Messiah, righteous high priest. Come before you, Father Yahweh, the great priests, great deacons, great men of your house, and the righteous young sons of Israel, Abel. We thank you, Father Yahweh, for allowing us to be part of your great work in your house in these last days. Asking and pray, continue to allow us to absorb this knowledge which comes forth from these books of Israel. Father Yahweh, allow us to take in this golden oil and to use it into our day to day lives. Bless the work and the workers and the sick and the afflicted. Bless Pastor, protect and watch over him. We pray for all our brothers and sisters who are held throughout the uh, earth and prisons and foreign countries for their zeal and strength to endure until the time of your great deliverance. And all those who are trying to get here, open a door for them to be able to do so, Father Yahweh. We see the destruction closing in on mankind, and we ask and pray, Father, that you continue to allow us to remain firm and faithful and allow us to uh, be able to uh, stop and think and consider our options and always proceed with your laws, Father Yahweh, day by day, second by second. We, we uh, hob you and praise you and thank you for all these things and complete unity the body of priests being seated with Shizu Hawkins through his head Yeshua Messiah, our honorable, most high, our honorable high priest. We pray these things. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yahweh bless you, man. You have a great Sabbath. <laughs>